Hey guys, it's Nathan, and this will be my first chess game in close to a year now. And uh, I've got a special guest with me on uh, on the mic here. And uh, this guy, this guy has close to 2,000 FIDE rating. He's beaten many a GM in rapid play over the board. So needless to say, I'm going to be in for a Made your butt kicking here. <laughs> Say hi, oh, Phil. Hi, guys. I'm Phil. Um, as you can probably tell, in an English player. Uh, close to 2000, just came back from the British Chess Championships just recently. So let's hope we have a good game. Yep. Yeah, so, what we're going to be doing is a little bit of live commenting. Uh, uh, I'm going to click over to the spectators tab here so I don't see any chat from spectators. Um, yeah, just a bit of live commenting on this game, uh, but not not too much help, not too much. Uh, try not to give the game away, because yeah. <laughs> I am I am chatting with my opponent here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So whenever uh, whenever you are ready, Phil. Right. Good luck. Here we go. You too. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> I always start with e4. No, yeah, me too. D4. I, I I haven't looked at the lines for D4 as black in a while. Mm. Now normally I play um, King's Gambit, but uh, I've been looking at Knight F3. I've been recently I've been playing D4 for some unknown reason. <laughs> so what should I do? Just for practice, we'll play. I don't want to play it, but I will play it. Oh no no no! <laughs> uh, I I'm I'm like a boss on Knight F3. I know the Scotch and the Rui Lopez and and everything on Knight F3. <laughs> I am uh, actually uh, when I was a VIP member, I um I actually watched some of the videos from Dennis Monacruces about the Open Roy Lopez, and I was I actually had two instances where. One of my opponents in a fee day long play could have played the open Roy Lopez. And I was going to go into this crazy line where it's just good for white. But I never got a chance to play him. It was quite unfortunate. Maybe best of luck next year. Yeah, you know. yeah I'm, more f I'm more familiar with the uh, closed Rui. And, and I even looked at the Marshall Gambit a little bit within that. Yeah, that's an aggressive, bonkers line. Yeah, and it's it's a pretty forcing opening. Like you have to play it directly, you know, like book. Otherwise, you get in trouble. So it's a pretty easy line to actually. Know. Yeah. I think in this is just like developing pieces in this opening. Yeah, this sort of yeah, this sort of system. It's pretty straightforward. Now it's like this is going to be the part where like I make a stupid move. Well, I've got like two squares for my bishop, and I know that's. I want to get yeah, that out. One reason in for h3 is just to like not minimize right. your white square bishops squares. Always the uh, e5 push. Yeah, yeah. At, the right at the right time. All right, so I'm gonna stick this here just timely manner yeah similar I guess I could have expected that uh hmm hmm so are you actually going to start playing some more uh, tournaments or any tournaments at all over the board uh, I don't know because when I lived in Florida my uh my best bet was St. Pete Chess Club and that was about an hour's right. drive, but now I live in Wyoming. Oh, have you, have you recently <laughs> so, moved or something? Is that why you haven't been on? Yeah, yep. I recently moved, and uh, needless to say, I doubt there's many <laughs> chess tournaments in Wyoming. I probably have to cross states for that, so I think it's less likely now. Uh, okay, so I, I chose to tuck the bishop back because I'm a uh, diehard. Rui Lopez fan, and that's something you do in the Rui. Yeah. yeah. Also, it's like uh, uh, trying to defend e5. Mm -hmm. Let the rook see, see clearly along the file. Possibly Fiancato bishop to g7. Although c3 would kind of blunt it off on that diagonal anyway. <coughs> I'm going to tuck this back. 
just put a stopper on e5, possibly go to c5, kick the bishop. These are my plans. <laughs> no. You know, my position just looks like crap. Now, is it possible that I can, without giving it away, but it probably just give it away anyway, is that can we play just play e5 anyway? With the threat of bishop h7 check there. Oh yeah, true chiz, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not I sure whether it's wise giving such an important square like e5 away though, just for a pawn where you'd have you'd have the king pawn, but uh, I could probably land a knight on e5 is what I'm thinking maybe. Hmm. Yeah, it might be a bit of a. Uh, I'm gonna try to work that out. If I play e5. Well, see, what I'm looking at is, is e5 and knight, knight d takes, and then bishop h7 check, and then king h8, and then knight g5, which isn't really threatening much because the bishop, the knight's actually defending f7 mate, so it's. But I'm just wondering whether I can just sack with a bishop, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, knight mate, knight takes f7 mate. I mean, I think I've got it going for it, maybe. Now it's just whether I can let you take that pawn or not. See, if I ignore e5, there's always the option for e6. I have that protected. Uh, J dude. Take d6, and... I could wind up with an isolated d-pawn if he takes d6 if I ignore e5. Yeah. But I really don't want to give up my h7-pawn. I don't know. If I have an isolated d-pawn on d6, it would still support a knight to e5, but I don't want to lose that pawn. Yeah, I mean, if you let me take d6, it's just looking... The pawn's backward pawn. It's easily attackable. I... It is, but my king's easily attackable if h7's lost. Like you said, the whole knight g5 thing on f7, that would be killer. Not only is it mate, but like I'd have to move my queen because there's possibilities for a fork at yeah. that point. I don't, I'm not sure whether you need to be worried about pawn e6 at this point. I don't I don't think pawn e6 would be my worry. It's pawn takes pawn takes d6 would be my worry. Well, yeah. And I'm trying to think I mean there the all my I have like three options. I have, you know, knight d takes e5, h6 or g6. And I don't know, g6 seems to make more sense because I have my bishop on f8 already and it could go to g7 and control e5 a bit more. But I I'm not sure that Isolated d-pawn would be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of blundered allowing e5. Maybe you... Maybe you... Uh... I'm just going to do this. See what happens. I think after queen c2, you should have just done knight e5 straight away. Straight away, block the square. Yeah. This is a bit like... You never used to know... Um... World Chess Network, did you? Or can't remember whether you were around then. You probably were. World cool. Chess Network is a website. Uh, I've heard of it. It was like, wasn't that some something that was related to ICC? Well, yeah, they merged, they merged together from... They, they made it World Chess Live. But before that, it used to be just called World Chess Network. And the thing that was so good about that was it's a bit like we're doing now, is they had a thing called Banter Chess. Like, it's like two people playing like a half an hour each game, and they were giving comments on the position, of each other's positions, and their ideas. And it right. used to be a really good website, but it ended up closing down, I think, due to people, like, not having enough members, I think it was. Yeah, probably. It, it, it was a shame, really. It was uh, quite a good website. They also had, like, master challenges, where a GM would sit as a master, and then there'd be, like, queues of, like, 30... I heard about that, and the acronym WCN for World Chess Network is familiar. I remember seeing that somewhere. Yeah, they had like 30, um, 
30 people just waiting to queue, queue to play the master. It was quite funny. It was quite good, actually. The best, the best one was the community challenge, though. And the only good thing about the community challenge was the fact that, uh, it, say, for example, it was me versus the community, like the whole of the website. It was right. like people, the audience, you played a move like E4, for example, to start with, and then the audience would then vote for the next move and the highest percentage. So, And it was everybody versus the GM. They've done similar things on chess.com as well. Yeah, it'd be, yeah basically it'd be like... Um, so, if, for example, if 50% chose C6 and like 40% E5 and 10% E6, then like the 50% that said C6 will be the audience's move. So it'd be E4, C6, and it happened all the way through the game. And the person who was hosting the community challenge got like an hour to make all the moves. But, uh, yeah, they've done. I remember what they did one against Anand on chess.com and <laughs> it ended in a draw after like 20 some odd moves it was a man really is stupid. in telos you mean no oh, Anand, Anand. as in uh, the world uh, champion yeah he uh <laughs> very brave for taking on like millions of people's supercomputers at the same yeah. time <laughs> yeah always gonna oh, end oh, in a bad okay. thing anyway this position looks um awful for black at the moment. Yeah, I can't. I can't argue. I I just needed a. It was either I played to d7 with that bishop or f5, and f5 still wasn't great. But uh, it's it's an interesting scrap, bro. I'm just trying to say. Because I'm in a couple pins right now. The bishop on my knight, and then the rook, or the bishop on my queen, and then the rook on my queen, and my knights are kind of. <laughs> Stuck. The other thing I didn't want to do now was put the knight in e. I wanted the knight to go to e4 without it getting exchanged off. Because uh, obviously knight f6 check is crushing, to say the least. Uh, but now you can just take it off if I do it now. I didn't really want to do that, but. And now, I mean, you'd just be putting yourself in a pin anyway. What would come next, d5? Yeah, prob well, no, knight f6 check. Well, no, yeah, right. Maybe, yeah, maybe I could do this, but I don't like it. It seems a bit offside. But, you've now, yeah, you've basically in these two pins. I suppose you could do knight f6, knight f3 check. It does get you out of one pin. I know, I think I'm now forced to do a6, though. Either I keep playing defensive, like rook c8 or something, or I have to like force some exchanges, I think. Let's see, a6, and let's say bishop takes knight. I would want to get the queens off. Queen takes e6. Queen takes e6. And then I could just retreat the knight. Knight takes e6. And yeah. What we, what we would have then is your rook commanding the e file, and mine can't get on it, which kind of stinks, but my... Uh, I'd have both bishops, and my d pawn still isolated. I don't know. It's it. It would probably still be better for you, but <sighs> yeah, that this isn't that just. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good, isn't it, that? I think the only reason it works is because my rook's opposite your queen, right? That's why there's no in-between move, like knight takes e5 or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a, yeah that's, the that's the main reason. I'll tell you what, this hurts my brain more than it would be <laughs> first game in a while. Oh. Maybe you should uh, Maybe you quit should chess forever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <sighs> Bishop F1 the only move just to <laughs> it looks so weird hey my bishop's sitting on F8 so <laughs> yeah but at least yours is doing a decent job there 
I think he, I think your bishop's probably more needed there than mine is on f1. <laughs> I don't know. I guess there's always e2, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, there is, but it... <laughs> only because you want that to help you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so weirdly enough, I was actually looking at uh, rook takes e5, but nah, it can't be any good. Crazy. Yeah, I can't. I can't say that's something I looked at. <laughs> no, nah, it's probably not. Uh, rook takes. It's interesting though. Rook takes. Obviously, you can't do knight takes, or you just lose your queen. So. If you do rook takes that to be, and if you do pawn takes bishop, well, what what about just pawn takes rook? Yo, yeah, that as well. Yeah, yeah, I was coming to that. Right. No, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. I was coming to that move. Yeah, I was just <laughs> you're, you're getting. That. I was just looking because you can do rook takes. I was just looking after rook takes. You can do pawn takes bishop. Anyway, because my queen's on pre. And then my knight rooks on pre as well. I mean, I mean, I mean, even then, like, let's say after all of that, rook takes knight, pawn takes rook, bishop takes c6, queen takes c6, queen takes c6, b takes c6, knight takes e5, and I have mess. split pawns on c and a, and then your knight's sitting on e5, and my bishop's still not doing anything. But I am an exchange down. Yeah, exchange down. But you have a majority on the queen side, and... Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting line. I'm pretty. I'm pretty going to have to be boring though. And just do uh, bishop f1. But no, that as long as we definitely explained it in the analysis. But yeah, it's definitely an idea. I think I'd probably have to play g4 at some point. Yeah, and I mean after that, I really don't have a good place to go because. I mean, I go to e6, well, now e6 is kind of, like, g4 comes, like, I'm going to have to go to e6, I could just preemptively go there now with tempo. Yeah. It just, it just get you out of the pit as well. Yeah. Maybe work on getting a piece to c4. Interesting, <sighs> yes. Is c4 a good move for white, rather? Now? Hmm. No, maybe not. Knight a5 is a bit of a pest. Yeah, knight a5 is crushing. Actually. Alright, I overlooked that. Yeah, so c4 is rubbish. In fact, you could have played knight a5, I think. Okay, so I've managed to get a little bit of... Resilience. A little bit of play. Maybe uh, queen d7 isn't the bad. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Get the queen off the same file as the rook, and you know, same direction as the bishop can't be a bad idea. No, knight e4, you're just going to play bishop g7, that's forced, isn't it? So if. And the a2 pawn's just hanging, I've just noticed that. Maybe. You know, maybe queen c8 was more accurate. Well, no, no, I that's more. It is. I mean. No, I mean, it would still be on the same diagonal as the bishop, and it would still be focusing on c4, and there would be no fork threat like there is now on uh, f6. Yeah, true. Well, you've always got... Oh, no, you can't do bishop g7, can you? That's a nuisance. Yeah, you can't do it, can you? Oh, there's knight takes d6, you're right. So I have to come to e7. That's kind That's of not annoying. Bad. It's okay. I know, but now I just have weakened pawns on my king, and I was expecting to put my bishop on g7 at one point. Uh, yeah, that is kind of annoying. Uh, it's always d5, I guess. d5 at some point, maybe trade off. Yeah, that's grab the grab the knight and then d5, and then knight a5 to c4. It's definitely interesting. I mean. Just because that pawn's hanging there on a2. Can't see if anything else to play at the minute. I was trying to look at ways to... Um, maybe bishop g5 wasn't a bad idea, actually. <coughs> Just right, bishop... Yeah, that's not bad. Not told. 
I'm going to grab this, I think, just to relieve some of the tension. I can't do these calculations right now. Uh, <laughs> Probably not a good reason to be taking, but... <laughs> you have to be careful, though. Some nasties coming up. Yeah, I, I see a little bit. Maybe it's best to just play with B8 or something. Defend that B pawn that's looking loose at the minute. Or is outright taking a bad idea? Well... I mean, I mean the pawn would I would still have my pawn on a6 to defend b5 from the bishop, so the bishop can't pin me right away. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not easy. Yeah. No, I was just looking at. You have to be careful of like knight f6 check ideas. If that knight moves off the diagonal, you just queen takes rook. Ah, uh, true. That's why I say if you just yeah, play rook b8, defend the pawn, and then the rook comes off the diagonal. Yeah. And now at least the pawn's defended. You might even be able to play b4 at some point. Oh. Not while a6 is on loose, though. Uh, what's my plan now? Well, that a pawn's loose. So I better sort that out. Oh, I am. So <laughs> I just played rook b8, and then I saw it like immediately after. Oh, don't say it, because you, you might uh, just see it. It's still playable, it might be. You you had bishop takes d6. Why do you have bishop d6? Because then my bishop takes d6 and f6 is hanging for your knight. Oh, so it is, yeah. <laughs> at, le Ooh. at least I'm a pawn up now. Yeah, you're probably going to be a couple pawns up by the time this is all over. <laughs> oh, my. My goodness. What do I got now? F f5? <laughs> Go oh, crazy? Shit. Yeah, I should have done knight f6 check first. Right now. That's a bit idiotic. <laughs> yeah, I definitely should do knight f6 check there first, maybe. Keep my pawns all crunched up there. Uh, I guess e4 is kind of... Asking me to take it, right? Uh, I mean, it's kind of needed. Just like that? Maybe. Oh, maybe is that not the best move? Actually, That's, a think... blunder, yeah. That's a blunder, yeah. No, uh... Is it? Yeah, I think it is a blunder, that. I'm not entirely sure. What does is, what is bishop d5 to... do? Just win a piece? No, I'm trying to... Well, let's just say pawn takes... What to a bishop d5? Uh... Is that just winning? Well, I mean, let's just do pawn takes first. Let's say pawn takes... Pawn takes knight... Queen takes... Queen takes, and then you've, you're attacking my bishop, and I can't move my bishop because then d7 hangs, so I have to support it with the rook on, on yeah, b6, and then your queen goes to d4? Yeah, why can't... No, because then I could just Yeah, trade. you can just play bishop d5, can you not? Pinning the knight to the queen. That's why I thought it just loses. Well, it loses it. Or does it? Uh... Oh, no, it doesn't, know. no. Bishop d5 and play queen f4. I don't know. I'm going to want to run this over with a computer later because I don't... I don't think... No, bishop d5 is no good because I'll play queen f4 and it's on your rook. So I'm out of the pin. So that's no good anyway. So maybe... I don't know. I think pawn takes is technically losing for me. I just, I just feel like it's one of those sacks that, like, I can't see, but I know a computer would tell me that Maybe it's lost. Maybe you could just ignore it and play rook takes b2, but is that just queening? That pawn might be queening there. I don't know. I'm just going to, yeah, that's... just ignore that. I don't, I don't want to play into something that's going to get me killed really quick. <laughs> it's true. Uh, oh, I can't. It's a bit, a bit I, annoying. That's that. too, 
He's ace. Maybe ace seven. I mean, maybe I was a bit too hasty with those king pawns in f5 and e4. I, maybe I should have just hung back a little. A7. <sighs> I'm going to have to sort this knight out to start with. I mean, mind you, my bishop's tied down right now. You can pretty much move your pieces anywhere where my bishop's controlling because, I mean, f6 is still hanging. Yeah, and I was just looking at... A7, A7, queen takes, and that leaves the bishop loose, so we'll just try that. Bishop D5 again is actually very interesting. What was wrong? With, yeah, bishop d5 works this time, actually. It's pure stupid. Because my rook wouldn't be on. Oh, pretty. no, you know, it doesn't quite work, actually, no. No, there's. What is there? There's. a8, queen. Bishop takes a8, knight f6, check. Bishop takes. Queen takes a8, check. No, would you, yeah, just, just c4, bishop c4, or something if I go bishop d5. And. I, I think. I think I just have to take right. Yeah. Now I need to be careful. You're on f2 here in some lines. No knight f6 check. Is that any good? That's what I was looking at. I mean, you'd get the bishop pair from that, but you still have that pawn on c, which I don't like. Knight g5, which is the best one? Knight g5. Well, no, well, yeah, knight g5 is interesting. Well, then again, you can just move the bishop. Uh, hold on, I'd have knight, yeah, knight g5, I actually would have had a... Good a... idea, it's, a good, it's good for you, I think, that one. Because at least, yeah. Nah, knight, knight g5, I would have had rook takes f2. And then queen takes f2 and then bishop c5. Yes, that's true, yeah. Yes, that's true, yeah. I mean, now this is check, so I kind of have to take here. Mm. This this check is still annoying, isn't it? Which Your one? Bishop, uh, the queen f2 is a bit annoying. I don't know, check for a draw. <laughs> you probably, you probably <laughs> gonna do have a draw in some line. Probably. I'm going to sit here and try to figure Not it out. Not when you've got one minute uh, left. I mean, yeah, as of now, I think I kind of have to play that move. Ah, uh, then there's... Then there's that. <sighs> well, that stopped, mm. that stopped the check on uh, C7. On C7, yeah. Now you're threatening mate here. Threatening mate? <laughs> no, your bishop, yeah. your bishop, your bishop could still go back, but it was close. I, I, I just saw that and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have it. <laughs> uh, not quite though, huh? Nearly. Uh, That'd have been embarrassing if I'd have fucking fell for that. <laughs> <laughs> right on chess, right on YouTube, that would have been an embarrassment. <sighs> what is there now? Ooh, is that winning? No, it can't be. It's winning for me. That's lucky. No! Rook B1, man! Oh, dear. Rook... Rook... I don't... Come on, Rook B1, that's not... Like, your king can escape, can No, it? he's got a mate on G1 and mate on H1 as well. Can't escape both. I'll look at that after. I don't think that was me. That wasn't going to be me. Yes. Well, I've still got rook check, though. But you still can play bishop p7. And then that's it. Game over. Uh, now then. Oh, I can't do that. What the hell? What were you thinking, queen, queen e3? Queen d5, actually. Oh. I was thinking you should, you should, uh... You should go queen e3. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah <laughs> that is quite funny, yeah. 
Okay, well, now I think I am going to take your advice. Well, you're a bit late now, but I've, I've made an escape square now. Uh, <laughs> have you? Ah, uh, no, ah, uh, yeah, my bishop's pinned. I was thinking I would have had bishop d6 check, but it's pinned. Uh, oh, have you got me there? Don't, don't, don't tell me. I don't have... No. What, queen? Well, yeah, we've got 13 seconds. Queen... Uh, queen. Oh, what is it? Where, where is the mate? Where's the mate? Where's the mate? Oh, G... oh, I don't. I don't Rook see G1 a mate. G one check. There's. No. That's it. Finished. That's. Oh. That's oh. it. Game over. Where did I have mate? 